everyone, welcome to the Lifestyles Medicine Podcast. This is Daniel Cho, Managing Director of Pathways to Wholeness Lifestyle Medicine, and I'm here with Dr. George Cho, our Medical Director. Hello everyone. Uh, we're coming to you from Toronto, Canada, and in this episode, we'll be talking about alcohol. Now, alcohol is a regular part of our uh, North American lifestyle, and um, probably most of us can't imagine a social gathering, such as a Christmas party, Thanksgiving, party, celebrations, weddings, family gatherings without at least some sort of wine or beer or other form of alcohol. Uh, however, while most of us uh, consume alcohol, we also know that alcohol isn't an ordinary drink and there are well-documented risks with alcohol consumption. Yet on the other hand, we also hear messages from health professionals, experts, and in the media about the purported health benefits of alcohol And the general message is to drink responsibly and in moderation. Uh, However, uh, two massive studies published this year in The Lancet is really challenging uh, this message of moderation and the health benefits of alcohol. So that's what what, uh, we're going to talk about today. Um, So to get started, let's first talk about what are the current recommendations for alcohol intake. Yeah, so the current recommendations right now are about 196 grams per week for men and about 98 grams per week for women and that comes out to about no more than two drinks for men and no more than one drink for women. So what do we mean by a drink? Yeah, so a drink would be kind of like a standard glass of wine or a standard pint of beer. It's, It's about a glass per day for women a glass per day, uh, two glasses per day for men. Now, it's not saying to drink that many. It's saying uh, the recommendations are not to exceed those amounts. I see. And so these Lancet studies that came out that received lots of press coverage uh, that are very massive studies, they're challenging these guidelines, aren't they? Yes, they're, they're definitely challenging the, the, the guidelines that we currently have. Uh, the first study was in uh, April of 2018, it was released at that time and Mm -hmm. in the Lancet, like you said. And in that paper, it showed that the lowest risk of all-cause mortality, and what that means is uh, death from any cause. So the lowest risk of death from any cause and the lowest risk for cardiovascular disease was associated with less than 100 grams of alcohol per week. Now, remember, the current guidelines right now says that men should not exceed 198 grams per week. Mm. Well, the, but the lowest risk found in this paper was with 100 grams per week and less, which then which would suggest that our current guideline that men should uh, go no no more than 196 grams per week is definitely too high. That's almost half. If you go from 198 to 100, that's yes, that's about right. Yes. Now the study did show that there was. Uh, I believe, a lower risk of death from heart attack. Yes, that's correct. So they found that alcohol intake lowered the risk of heart attacks, I mean death by heart attack, okay. uh, by about 6%. But, you know, here's a, here's a flip. Um, here's the, on the flip side, it says that it, it, they found that alcohol intake was associated with increased risk of death of our other types of vascular, cardiovascular conditions. So for instance, they found a 14% higher risk of death from stroke, 6% increased risk of coronary artery disease death, 9% increased risk for heart failure, 24% increased risk for fatal hypertensive disease, 15% increased risk of aortic aneurysms. So uh, 6% lowered risk of death from heart attack, yes. But other cardiovascular diseases, there was increased risk up to 15%, even 24% in some cases. So are we really saying that we're willing to exchange 6% lower risk of heart attack for 14%, 50%, 24% increased risk of other vascular and heart conditions? I don't think that would be the right message to send to people. So, you know, we always hear, um, for instance, in the media about, you know, how alcohol is good for the heart. Right, so I guess with these, this new study from the Lancet, it sort of at least challenges that sort of messaging. It definitely challenges that messaging. It challenges the guidelines that we have right now. 
it definitely suggests that it needs to be much lower. Uh, it challenges it. And not only that, it those who want to continue suggesting these guidelines, it's it's misleading to say that these guidelines represent a kind of healthier way to drink alcohol because it clearly it does not. And in fact, it could be dangerous as we had just uh, discussed that is there's increased risk of death from drinking drinking within even the recommended guidelines. Mm-hmm. There's increased deaths associated with that. So it's not just challenging, but it's uh, there's mis- it's misleading. It could be dangerous as well. So this April study um, suggests that common guidelines are too high and that they should be lower. But right. then in August, there was another massive study published in, in The Lancet um, that actually has a more of an abstinence message. Can you share that with us? Yes. Uh, so in um, the study in April of this year suggests that the current guidelines are too high, particularly for men, okay. that it needs to definitely go down. Then another paper was released in August of this year, 2018, which made huge uh, waves in the media and pe- people were covering it. And basically in that paper, they studied, it was a global study on alcohol use and risk of death from cancer, all-cause, mortality, mortality, cardiovascular disease, risk of diabetes, diabetes and so forth. And pretty much the main message that comes out of that paper is that there is no safe amount of alcohol to drink. Mm, wow. In fact, Daniel, if you let me, I would like to read some of the statements directly coming out from the researchers themselves in these papers. Sure, go for it. Yeah, so in one line, the researchers say, and I quote now, the level of alcohol consumption that minimized harm across health outcomes was zero standard drinks per week, Mm. end quote. So they're very clear. They said, you want the minimum harm to your health? Well, that level is zero Mm. standard drinks of alcohol per week. Another quotation, I'm quoting now, alcohol is a leading risk factor for global disease burden and causes substantial health loss. We found that the risk of all-cause mortality and of cancer specifically rises with increasing levels of consumption. And the level of consumption that minimizes health loss is zero, end quote. So uh, to me, the the researchers couldn't, couldn't express this in more plain language. The level of alcohol associated with the lowest health risk is not one drink, half a drink, a quarter of a drink, it's zero. And that's exactly what the researchers are saying about their study. The thing about cancer really interests me, so I want to go there. But just before we do that, can you share with, share with us uh, what kind of studies were these? Were they just a, a single study, uh, which, you know, people might say it just, you know, well, there's a whole bunch of other studies that we need to compare it to or or were they kind of reviews, meta-analysis? What kind of studies were these? And that makes them makes the findings so so important. So yeah, so for our listeners, these weren't just uh, studies done by only a few researchers in only one setting. Well, uh, for both studies, they collected data from multiple different studies and pulled the results together to come to their conclusions. So for instance, in the April April study uh, in the in the Lancet. They collected data from three uh, large-scale trials, and to pull their uh, pull those results together to come to their conclusions. In the August two thousand eighteen study, they the researchers collected data from six hundred ninety four data sources, and over five, around five hundred ninety two retrospective and prospective studies. Mm. So this is important because it wasn't just a few researchers in one university setting. They did some type of uh, trial, a scientific study. No, it was they got multiple different studies, put them together, and came to these conclusions, which makes, uh, which makes these findings even that much more stronger and compelling. So we have uh, a summary, a uh, systematic review um, of multiple studies, and these basically are showing that are really challenging this message of moderation and saying, look, the best evidence we have right now. Um, and of course, that could change, but at least for now, the best evidence shows that the safest level is zero. Yes, that's exactly what the authors are saying. The, the word that they use 
is zero. They're not using moderation. They're saying it's zero. Mm-hmm. That's very plain. So let's talk about the link with uh with cancer. So how why is it that alcohol is strongly associated with uh risk for cancer? Yeah. So the answer is very simple. It's because alcohol is a carcinogen, and for our listeners. Uh, carcinogen means that it causes cancer. In fact, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, the IARC, they label alcohol as a group one carcinogen. Now, a uh, group one, so there's different uh, groupings, and there's like group three, two, and so forth. One means uh, that they are absolutely sure that such substance is. It causes or linked with cancer. Mm. So alcohol, the uh, the uh, substance within the drinks that we label as alcohol, these things are group one carcinogens. As in, they are absolutely certain that these things are linked with cancer. I think that's really important to know because, um, I think it's pretty common knowledge that you know alcohol. Has inebriating effects on us, and you know can affect our judgment. So when we drive, you know, you have increases for、uh, accidents and this sort of thing, and other you know misbehaviors. But I think the link with cancer is probably less well known out among the public. Yes, and I think that's because whenever we talk about alcohol, there's obviously like the drunk driving and so forth. But、right. in terms of like the positive benefits, is always dominated by the. The link between alcohol and、uh, and the heart, right, right. So that's why many people realize that yes, alcohol might be there's some bad things about it, but they don't realize how serious that badness, I guess you can say, is.、Mm-hmm. That it is a carcinogen, a group one carcinogen. It is definitely linked with cancer. So when you see your patients, what is your recommendation to them? Do you promote、uh, basically an abstinence message? Yes, absolutely.、Um, you know, we、uh, we in the clinic and Pathways to Wholeness, we 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 are committed to evidence based lifestyle medicine. And when we look at the current、uh, research right now, especially studies like the two that we're discussing on this podcast, and just look at the substance alcohol in its totality, there I believe there's only one really responsible message to give to patients that is. Uh, that is abstinence. Work towards abstaining completely from this unnecessary harmful substance. It's very contrary to these, to the current message, even from public health organizations about moderation and, and you know the benefits.、Um, how do your people? How do patients react to that? Oh,、uh, they they don't challenge it.、Um, they I think they when it's explained to them. So, you know, I don't just say. Stop drinking alcohol, right?、Yeah. You explain to them. You sh- actually discuss these studies. You actually, I send them links to these studies,、mm. so they can actually read for themselves. And when you kind of reason with them as to the reason why you're suggesting this, then all, it, then to them it makes sense. To any any reasonable mind, it should make sense that alcohol is not something that you need in your diet,、uh, and in fact, it's something that's detrimental. And the science dem demonstrates it. So. I think the、uh, with such studies like these coming out, that、uh, I hope that the public health, public health, and、uh, the medical community will will、um, will catch on and share what should be the real message to to patients, and that is they need to encourage them to abstain, not just moderate, abstain completely. You know what comes to my mind is you know in lifestyle medicine there is、uh, sort of a, a saying that says、uh, lifestyle medicine has many different benefits.、Um, And only positive side effects,、um, right, right. Which, of course, is sort of put in contrast to、uh, more conventional approaches to medicine, where you know you take a drug, it might be effective for one thing, but then it has negative side effects.、Um, but lifestyle medicine、uh, has all these benefits and only positive <laughs> side effects. That's correct.、Right? Yeah. So when I think about alcohol, or, or you know, putting it vis a vis, say water, for instance. Um, you know, there, no one says that there's any risk with drinking water, right?、Um, but if you think about things like alcohol and、uh, you know sugar sweetened beverages, these other drinks, there's always these negative、um, effects that are associated with them. And really,、uh, like you're saying, it's it's really not necessary for us to drink them. 
for sure yeah it's it's totally unnecessary and i think the time for defending alcohol has is really really passed yeah these new studies really uh, certainly mark a shift in our conversation on alcohol and i think it's going to be really interesting to see how national guidelines health professionals and most important, importantly the public will react to these findings if at all uh, and i'm especially fascinated to see how the lifestyle medicine community will respond to these findings as well because at least as far as I'm aware, we, uh, by and large, do not really promote a message of abstinence per se. And when it comes to risky substances, our focus is primarily on tobacco. Is that your sense as well? Yes. So I think that is definitely where last time medicine is right now. But I think we do need to catch on to the to the science. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think for our listeners out there, you know, we have to just kind of pause and just reason through this. If there was any other substance that had the same health profile as alcohol, you can be almost assured, you can almost be assured that the health community, the medical community, um, they would vilify that substance if it was a supplement mm. with the same health profile as alcohol. Some benefits here and there, but overall, uh, not good. If there was a supplement that that was like that, if there was a herb that was like that, if there was a food like that, then you would be assured that it would be vilified. Right. But for some reason, alcohol has is given a pass, right? And I I just don't I I don't I think the time has come for really to for that to stop and for us to really be telling the truth to people that this is not a healthy substance. It is not necessary for heart health. It is absolutely not necessary. The things that we talk about on this podcast, a whole foods, plant-based diet, exercise, uh, stress management, these things are, are a better way to help with heart health, not alcohol, which comes with so much other baggage. Yeah, I think that's so right. And But I think it's just so hard because alcohol is such an ingrained part of our society and our lifestyles, like I said at the beginning. Um, so to turn the ship around, is going to be really, really difficult. Yes, that's absolutely absolutely right. And I think it starts with podcasts like this, starts with research papers coming out like the ones we discussed mm-hmm. to keep on pushing the message. And uh, I think the hope, hopefully the medical community will come around. And if not, at least the public, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, consumers, health consumers will be aware of what's going on and what the truth is, and they will make a decision for themselves to abstain. I think that's really where, that's really where it's at. The individual people themselves, we have to come together and be like, you know, this is the truth. Alcohol is not a healthy substance, um, and is absolutely not necessary for health. It increases the risk of death from so many different uh, conditions. So therefore, I'm going to abstain. I think this is a choice that we have to make ourselves. And this is something that I would, a choice that I would encourage all of our listeners to make and to move towards. All right. Thank you so much for taking us through these studies. Um, please see the podcast notes for a link to the studies. And also, we will provide links to coverage from major Canadian and American media. So uh, you can read them yourselves. Um, that's what we're really about, to ensure that you have the information in your own hands so that you can read it and come to your own conclusions. I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. Please do us a favor by leaving us a review and sharing your comments wherever you get your podcasts. And please do share this podcast with any friends or family who you think could benefit from the simple yet powerful principles of lifestyle medicine. So you've been listening to the Lifestyle is Medicine podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.